this is probably one of the biggest issues that people have with this bike is the is the gas tank. Now, first off, I mean his gas tank, um, it's it's a beefy gas tank. What is it? Four point seven gallons or something? Four four no five five gallons. Five no. gallons. So. Four point five, I think. Uh, pretty common for dyno owners not to know a thing about their bike. <laughs> Triple H dead had moto vlogs. So today we're going to do a little uh, review on the Iron 883 slash Nightster 1200. This is my iron. I'll give you a little walk around. It's dirty as, as heck. It is totally dirty. And uh, before you had this bike, you had the Raider, but then before that you had, well, Nightster. you had that other bike, but then you had the Nightster. The Nightster yeah. is the 1200 version of this. But I've bored this out, so this is a 1200 Sportster, so it's basically a Nightster, but it has the blacked out look of the iron. That's the main difference between the Nightster and the iron is the paint, the paint theme, right? Like this has the flat black with no pinstriping, cool. and it's got the blacked out engine, whereas the Nightster has yeah. a grayed out engine. Um, you know, powder coating. But uh, this has the 883 gearing. It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. This has the 883 gearing though, with the 1200 engine. Um, it's relatively inexpensive, 1200 bucks for the for the kit. And uh, anyways, um, I thought, I, you know, Gabe and I could kind of talk a little bit about the two bikes since you had the Nightster. Um, so let's start off, I guess, with uh, you go ahead and I'll, I'll follow you, but let's right. go ahead and start off with uh, why Why do you not have the Nightster anymore? Later, dude. Uh, because I wanted a bigger bike. Okay. I wanted to be able to go out for a longer ride and uh, be able to take, you know, luggage and whatever. Yeah. Well, you can do that with an iron, too. Like, I'm getting luggage uh, installed uh, here in the next couple weeks. So you can, you can transform any Harley into whatever you want to do. You can customize the crap out of them, right? But, uh, True. but you're right, the, the Street Bob is definitely a, a bigger frame than the Iron 883 or the Nightster, which have the same size frame as each other. So uh, my, my biggest thing I would say is I, I love this bike. Like the look of it, you know, that guy that was riding the Daytona, the first thing he did was come over and, and look at my bike. Uh -huh. and, and not to slam your bike, I mean, your bike looks great. But uh, I think that this iron has maybe more of a universal look to it. The 3.3 gallon tank, like everything. It just it has a really good aesthetic look to it. And uh, which is the first thing I fell in love with for sure. I think if, I think a lot of people see a Dyna uh, more of a touring bike, you know. And it really is just a souped up Sportster. It's just a bigger framed, bigger cousin. Uh, remember that cop came down here, so. Yeah. I don't know where he's at, that motorcycle cop, but. Hopefully he went off the cliff. <laughs> oh, brutal. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my, the one thing I do want to say about this bike is that yes, it is, it is not a comfortable bike. It is not like a, a, a bark lounger on wheels, like it's bigger brethren. Uh, you feel the bumps. It's definitely a slammed down suspension. And, and I think for a lot of people, uh, this bike is really just, you know, stock, it, it really is just a bar hopper. Right. You know, it's really good for cruising around town, you're commuting, all that stuff's gonna be great with this bike. Um, I live in California, so I can lane split and filter, and this bike is super easy, much easier than the Street Bob even, for lane splitting and filtering, because of the narrow frame on it. Um, but what else, what else? Oh, I can't see anything. That's not good. <laughs> um, but yeah, you feel the bumps. 
I'm not gonna say it's like just the most uncomfortable thing in the world, but uh, I really enjoy this aspect of it, that it's bumpy, that it's raw, that it's it's like a a wild horse, a wild stallion, man. It just, it, it you have to earn the respect of this bike. It, you, you have to earn it with every mile you ride on it. It's not, it's not gonna be cozy. It's not gonna be easy to throw around. Right. You know, and that might, that might go with all Harleys, but, or all cruisers, but, uh, but I, I mean, I think this is a fantastic bike for sure. But it is a small frame bike. You know, I'm, um, I'm just, I'm like five foot 10 and uh, I weigh about 240. I know I need a diet, but, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm a little bit big for this bike, but you can easily change a lot of that. Forward mounted controls are easy to throw on this bike. They don't go too far forward or anything. Uh, a bigger seat, bigger shocks, and uh, and you're good to go. And those aren't very expensive modifications. Yeah, I mean, you know, forward controls probably run you like two or three hundred dollars, depends on what you want, you know. Yeah. Quality, brand, whatever. Yep. But yeah, I mean, it's really simple to turn it into a more of a touring bike. Yeah, I mean, you can even without, install a, a Batwing fairing on this guy if you wanted yeah. to, you know? Which is insane, but cool, but... Yeah, I mean, it's just a very versatile bike. Um, I constantly, almost every day since I've owned this bike, I've owned it now for th about three years, uh -huh. and um, I constantly find myself going out to the garage and just staring at the bike. And uh, so, I mean, it, it's it's valuable to me even when I'm not riding it, which is which is cool. But again, that's just looks. That's still a subjective thing, I guess. But um, but yeah, comfort, comfort wise, I mean, the stock seat is not that good. The stock suspension is no, not that good. Um, you know, the the sound out of it's really quiet, uh, as as are most most bikes, anyways. Stock. Yeah. Um, as an 883, I felt like it was more than enough bike to, to enjoy everything I do with motorcycle riding. Um, the only time that I kind of found it lacking was going, you know, uphill. I just felt like I had to really be more aggressive on the gearing and um, to keep up. But I, I didn't have any real problems keeping up with people. Um, I, the, actually, to be honest, as an 883, the only time I really felt like it was lacking was when I was lane splitting, when I'd filter at a stoplight and get uh -huh. up get up to the front. Getting uh, right off the line, I just felt like the 883 was a little lacking. Um, but upgrading to the 1200 big bore kit from Screaming Eagle, uh, man, it just really woke this bike up. And it, it's it's just a blast. I've ridden so many bikes, man. I've, I've, I've test ridden so many bikes, more than a lot of people do. And, uh, and still, I have yet to lose love for this bike. Right. And I, and I think it's a fantastic beginner bike. It could be one of the best beginner bikes I I that out there. I, I might get a lot of slack for that, but you're not gonna get too confident too quick on this bike. And that's a great thing when you're a beginner riding, a, a beginning rider. And, uh, but this bike will take you all the way through to the intermediate levels of riding, you know? Bore it out to a 1200. Even more, I think. Yeah, I mean, this, yeah, this, there are people that have been riding for 80 years and all they ride are Sportsters. Uh, don't be fooled by anything the salespeople have to tell you about this being a girly bike or, or anything along those lines. This bike. Or oh, that you're gonna change it within six months. And yeah, this. So it, it, it really depends on you. It depends on you. There's a. I know some people that have gotten rid of their iron, and uh, they always come back about a year later, and they 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 talk to me about how how much they regretted getting rid of it. And well, I've had, I've had people tell me, you know, same thing with the with the Dyna. Yeah. If they went to. Uh, Watch out, watch out. Yeah. If they went to uh, do a street glide or a road glide. Yeah. And they just regret buying that type of bike because it's not, not fun to ride on the twisties. Yep. Because it becomes a, it's a heavier bike, you know, it's a, it's a bulkier bike. 
woman. So I, I'm thinking it's the same, you know, if you like your Sportster. Yeah, you'll like the it's Dyna. It's going to be the same, you know? Well, the, like I said, the Dyna is just a big cousin to the Sportster. That's really all it is. It's just a bigger framed Sportster. Yeah. When it's all said and done. Um, yeah, I, I mean, these these are great. I mean, for the price, you can get into used uh, iron or used uh, Sportsters. Uh, I know in this area, they go for like maybe 6,000, 5,500, and they really never drop below that price. Um, maybe yeah, 6, no, 65. I, I've seen like really old Sportsters still selling for around five grand. Yeah, yeah, they just... Yeah. They're they're great bike, and I, if you're if you're just getting into motorcycle riding, I, I highly recommend it. They're not very heavy, uh, especially when you get moving. They're they they are very maneuverable. This bike is very like I, I I have a lot of flexibility with this bike. I don't have some crazy lean angle, and um, you know, I, but this bike will take you on 500 mile days. It'll hurt stock, but with like I said, with some upgrades. This bike will do a fantastic job of, of getting you out to the beautiful stuff. Utah, Yosemite, Big Sur. I mean, it's just long distance trips. And like that guy that up there at that that uh, that little rest area that we were just at uh -huh. on that Daytona 675. I mean, it's he he basically just admitted to us that he's never left further than like 20 miles away from home on that yeah. bike. He can't do it. He can't go for more than an hour without being real sore. And it doesn't, well, you know, that doesn't mean <laughs> that me. nobody can. No, know? and there are people that do. I mean, yeah, but for sure. it's more common that, you know, on the sports bike, you just go, I don't know, 20, 30 miles or so, and then you've got to rest. Yep. I, so you got to stretch your legs. you got to stretch your back, whatever, you know. This isn't necessarily just a review for the Iron, but it is a review for the Sportster series. And I, and I, I mean, one Sportster is very much like the other ones. And um, there's some subtle differences with, with like the 48, the 72. Um, there are some differences, but at the same time, a lot of that is just functional or like, you know, uh, style differences and it's some control differences, but not a whole lot. And you can make this bike look like a 72. You can make this bike look like a 48. You can, I mean, there's, the customization options are endless and, and there's a lot of cheap uh, in a, or inexpensive, I guess is a better word, inexpensive uh, aftermarket parts for really customizing your, your Sportsters or even your Dynas. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, as far as, as my review, like my, 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 my main point here is that a Sportster is just versatile, versatile, versatile. It is, it'll just, you'll have fun, you'll hit the point of the, that adrenaline with this bike. Um, you'll be able to hit up the twisties. I mean, I ride the twisties all the time with this bike. Uh, you know, I might not be able to take it as fast as a, as a 636, but, you know, I'm safer for it. <laughs> um, especially as a beginning rider, this bike definitely looked out for me. It didn't, it didn't let me feel confident beyond my skill level. And, um... Yeah, I mean, in this bike, I, I get a lot of attention with this bike. A lot of people come up and talk to me about this bike. Um, the styling, the look of it is just awesome. And, and, and uh, uh, man, it's just a fun bike. Um, for the twisties, though, yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to take it as fast as a, a lot of the uh, sportier bikes. That's kind of an obvious thing. As far as yeah. cruisers go, though, you're going to be able to take it. This is, this is definitely built more for, and the same with the Dyna, built more for the twisties than the larger cruisers that are out there. Um, let's see, commuting, this bike is fantastic. Freaking awesome. Um, going on long distance tours, um, better than most bikes. It could be a challenge, but it's doable. Yeah, a couple hundred bucks in a new seat, uh, or you know, a couple hundred bucks, you get a new seat and some shocks, and you're, it's, you're, you're in a good place for long distance trips. Um, so yeah, I, overall, I, I, I just love this bike. Um, it gives me that cowboy feel. It's solidly, solidly built. Um, there's really no plastic bits and bobs on it. It's, it's sturdy everywhere you look, just well thought out. And um, it, it's just a pleasure to ride. Um, I, I, I just love it. <laughs> I just, I just love it. That's, that's my review, I, I guess. I don't. Um, 
you know, as far as specs and stuff go, I mean, you're more than welcome to check it out on Harley's website. Uh, they don't really give a lot of, like, the horsepower and yeah, torque. Know. Yeah. But, but it, I think it's better to just, like, schedule a, a test ride. And, yeah. You know, go from there, see how people like it. And, like, if, if somebody's really thinking about it, you know, should do their homework and before they drop the money. You know, this bike is also, I think, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about a mechanical stuff, and Gabe helps me out with a lot of it, but but from what I've learned so far, the, the, the maintenance on this bike is super easy to do. It's just an easy bike to work on. Um, and, it, and it's not, like, crazy expensive. You don't have to, like, baby this bike. Like, it's not going to just rattle itself apart. It's not, nuts and bolts aren't just rattling themselves away. Um... It, it doesn't leak oil, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it's not, the most vibration I feel is when I'm at a, a stoplight or when I'm going like 90 miles an hour on the freeway. And uh, and even then, like it's at a stoplight, the mo that's the most vibration for sure. And it, and it, it feels good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, so I mean, it, I, you know, it's not, I, I wanna say it's the perfect bike. But, you know, that's, <laughs> there's, uh, there's no perfect bike out there, but this is a fantastic bike for, for somebody wanting to get into the sport, a fantastic bike for somebody wanting to get into a cruiser. Um, they hold their value extremely well, and, um, and they're just a simple last to ride. And you're, you're, you're gonna feel that air. I, you know, when you have the Knights, or even when you have the Dyna without your, uh, without your fairing there, did you ever feel like you're gonna f like fly off your bike? Uh, not really. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just I you don't I, I feel planted on this bike. I don't feel like I'm gonna just fly around or you know whatever. It's got mid-mounted pegs. Super easy to uh, if you're going over like obstacles or big bumps and you don't want to bust your kidneys, you can just easily stand up on your bike and uh, no problems there. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, it's great. Go out and get your sports here today, guys. <laughs> Deadhead approved.